There are, there are occasions in our, in our lives when following the commands and teachings of the Lord makes no sense. Based on whatever circumstances we're in, whether they're physical, emotional, economical, you know, it, it, it would appear imprudent or even inconvenient to follow the teachings of the Lord. And we can look at ourselves and, and say, well, hey, you know what? Uh, I need a little extra money, so why don't I uh, cook the books a little bit? Or, you know, we, we could be lonely you know, and, and um, feel emotionally empty and says, well, hey, I need a partner, so I'm, I'm, I'm going to not follow the teachings on marriage in the church. You know, we, can, we can look at all these things and, and, and try to say, well, this is not natural. It's just not natural to, to follow the teachings of God. I have human needs. Well, to follow the commands and observe the teachings of the Lord, it's not just about following a bunch of rules. It's rather an invitation, an invitation from our Lord Jesus Christ to have a better life, but also to walk in the miraculous and supernatural power of God. Today, we learn a lot from the readings here. Uh, we, first, looking at the example of St. Peter. Uh, we, we just learned here that, they were, uh, uh, that there was a lot of people sitting around the boat listening to Jesus speak and, and hearing the word of God, taking it all in. And then right after that, um, Jesus just tells Peter, hey, Peter, um, let's, uh, let's go out on the sea and... Uh, catch some more fish, uh, you know, uh, um, and Peter, of course, says, well, Lord, you know, we've been trying to do this all night. You know, we, we, you know they've already, we started washing the nets and all that, and, uh, you know, they were tired, um, you know, so he, he does this respectfully, of course, and, and then he says, but at your command, Lord, I will do it, and, and for Peter, it, it, we can look at this and, and, and say, well, it makes no sense for Peter to say yes to the Lord. He's tired, you know, he's, he's, he's worked hard all night and now, you know, the Lord is telling him to go and catch fish. But he said, but Jesus says, turn the nets to the other side. And so he does this and what happens? There's a miracle. You know, the, the, the nets fill up with fish. But had he said no to Jesus, this is Peter, we would never have seen the miracle. Had he con uh, continued to, or, or had he argued with him or doubted, this n probably would have never happened. But he says yes to him. He says yes to the command, even though it makes no sense. Mother Angelica once said, is, she, says if, she says, if you're not willing to do the ridiculous, you will never do the miraculous. And St. Paul speaks about this very topic today. He says that, uh, that the foolishness, he says, for the wisdom of the, okay, sorry. He says, uh, if anyone among you considers himself wise in this age, let him become a fool so as to become wise. Well, what is he saying here? What is, what is Mother Angelica saying? This is that we just uh, go around and be goofballs and act silly all day. Is that what they're saying to become uh, foolish and, uh, and, and do ridiculous? No. What it's saying here is that to, it's asking us to submit to God. You see, and in, in the eyes of the world, in the mindset of the world, this is foolishness. So why, why submit to God and do what appears to be not natural for us to do? Why, why should we put away a life of sin? You know, when, when, when it just makes more sense just to live it up. And so Paul tells us to become a fool and, and when he's telling us to become a fool, he's saying that, that we are to open ourselves up to the teachings of Christ, to receive them. You see, one thing is that if we're fixed on the wisdom of the world, and you know, all of us, of course, should be you know, doing, doing our best to, um, you know, to, to, to increase our intelligence, to learn, to study, and all that. 
But, well, the, the Greeks here, this is, this is who Paul's speaking to, the Greeks here were, had a long history, a long reputation of, go, of being good thinkers, good philosophers, and, and good rhetor rhetoricians. Um, and, and so Paul is having this to contend with here, but yet these, these, these people in Corinth, they were very stubborn in their knowledge and prideful. That says, yeah, we've already acquired all this teaching, all this training of, 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 of uh, the ancient philosophers, and why should we have yours? You know, and, and so that's why it appears to them that, that it's, it's like foolish to, to take in the words of God, to listen to, to, to Paul and to, and to receive the teachings of the Lord. For them, it's foolish. But then, yet Paul is saying, he says that you're, you're so prideful that there is so much more knowledge, but because of your pride, you are missing out on this. You're not, you're not getting the fullness of everything. And you, but at the same time for them, then, you know, there was, there was always a lot of arguing. There, there were good arguers. And it would have been like to follow Paul or to follow his teaching would have been like kind of becoming a slave to the person. That, that's the way they thought, that if I follow this Christianity and, and, and you know, uh, submit to the teachings Paul has given me, I'll, I'll be a slave, you know. Um, because, you see, if they, if they followed somebody's teaching, the Greeks back then, they would become, that, that would be their teacher. And so that, you know, they would kind of become a slave to his teaching, uh, in other words, or a student. But then Paul goes on to say here is, is that, you know, if, if, you, if you follow these teachings, you belong to God, to, to Christ. And, and he's going to give you much more than what you have here. You know, his teaching is, is limitless. His power is limitless. And it's all for you. So why take in a little bit when you could have a lot. He's, and that's why he says, that's, that's again, that's why he says, all belong to God and you to Christ and Christ to God. You know, here, here God gives you all this. Here, now belong to him, submit to him, and you have much more. And so in following the, the teachings of Christ and submitting to these, you know, it, it takes great faith. And you know, we do this, of course, by, by asking God, but, but just by saying yes. And what's the result of this? What's the fruit of this? Again, it's, it's living in the miraculous, the supernatural power of God. You know, and, and we know that to live and to accept the teachings, we can't do it on our own. We need the grace of the Lord. You know, and, and if we're just thinking about this in, 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 in human wisdom and saying, well, no, that makes no sense, that's not rational, that, that whatever it is, then we'll never have it. But, but to become a fool, to become a fool is mean that just to, just to say, well, that I need to learn much more. I need much more knowledge. I need much more of God. Okay, give it to me. And the fruit of all this, of living in the, in the supernatural power of God, is, is, that, is, is that what it speaks. It's the witness that it gives. When people see you, people see you living the teachings of God. They say, you know what? How do they do this? How can, how can somebody single uh, be so pure? Because of God. How could, how could somebody who's, um, uh, who, who, who puts in a full uh, hour, uh, eight hours of work and works consistently, you know, be so uh, prosperous and, and, and just be so good? Because of God's power. How could someone who's, uh, who, who's obeying the teachings on, on marriage be so happy? Because of God's power in their lives. You see, so, so this, is, this is an opportunity, an opportunity to, to live in the supernatural power of God. Go from natural to supernatural. See, th this, is, this is the grace it, working in our lives. See, that's this why it's so important to, to give it all to the Lord, to say, here I am, humbly submitting ourselves, saying yes to him as Peter does today, even though it, it makes no sense in, in, in human rationale at times. But God will make it make sense. Now, and and this, this, of course, it never, sometimes it just doesn't get easier. It just gets more difficult as, as we go along in the Christian life. You know, following the teachings of the Lord, well, yeah, that was easier, you know, 15 years ago, but then now it's, now it's harder, you know. Now, uh, you know, times have changed and all that. But it's still possible. And what does this mean? That means that God wants to do, show you much more of his power. He's, he's asking us to become more dependent on him. That, that's what's, what's going on. 
And so like, well, we say for instance, um, say we, we've backed off a little bit and we, we're just struggling and we're having doubts and all that. You know, let, let's, let's take a look back, okay, here, Peter. Peter says yes to Jesus at, in this first instance after hearing the word of God. Even though it doesn't make sense, he still puts the nets out. Well, then we have three years go by, okay? And, and as we can see from the life of the apostles, Peter, you know, there's, there's good times and bad times. There's times, uh, you know, where he's even himself doubting. He betrays the Lord. But yet all through, all through the while, God has called him to greater things, showing him more of his power. And then at the very end of, of, uh, of the Gospels, you know, Peter betrays Christ. And, and of course, Peter is, is repentant, is, is sorry for this, but then Christ appears to him once again in the same way he first appeared to him. And he's calling him back. He comes to him to rescue him. And so, so Peter has to humble himself. Now, if, if Peter's thinking in human terms, you know, and, and thinking, well, uh, you know, I, I, I just can't do it. Why should I do this? It's been hard for three years. But no. He, he, he humbles himself and sees, sees Christ. He submits to him once again. You know, it's the same story, the, the fish in John chapter 21. Here, Jesus says again, hey, you know, put your, put your nets to the other side. And they do that. They recognize him and they submit now. And so the, the same for us. You know, it, God is right there. He's come to us. It's now just about submitting once again. And the, the apostles in John chapter 21, now they're, they're, they're walking in, in something new. God is about to do a new thing for them. And so they, they receive this humbly. And then here comes the Holy Spirit. They go out and they preach the gospel to all nations. And the same for our lives as well. You know, we, Christ found us at a, at a certain point. We live the Christian life. We may you know, back up every once in a while. But there he is again to bring us back to himself. And to give us something new. He wants it. Yes, it may be harder. But again, he's, he's going to show us more of his power. More of his love will be manifested in and through us. So we submit to Jesus the Lord. Turning back to him. And, and giving it all to him. So that he can show us much more. So he can, we, can, we can have much more of his love. And that's why uh, Paul says, you know, what, I has seen, what no eye has seen or ear has heard, what God has prepared for those who love him. So now we go to him in love. God bless you all.